At just 22 years old, William was arrested and charged with aggravated sexual assault. He was convicted of forcing an 11-year-old to perform oral sex on him. He spent 18 years behind bars and is currently a sex offender for life. But that didn't scare his wife, Cindy, away. In fact, she met him while he was on parole and fell in love with him to the point that she became his sex offender chaperone. Now she desperately wants her husband to clear his name and hopes that people will stop looking at him like he's a pedophile. Take a look. It just hurts inside to know that I know he's innocent. I can't just feel it. My kids love him, my family loves him. We've never. Mine and William's life is pretty well perfect. But one thing that keeps bugging us and keeps just tearing at our hearts is this sex offender conviction and we can't get off it, we can't get it away. You know, he can't go to a lot of family functions, he can't go to a lot of school functions, he's not allowed at all on school property. I decided to become a sex offender chaperone. You're basically like, I say like a glorified guardian because anything they do wrong will reflect on you. I know he was taught, you know, in all the classes that he took that you have to accept the guilt. And I don't know that I could do that if I was innocent. I couldn't accept the guilt and still continue to live my life like that. Um, did you go to trial or you took a plea? I took a plea. Why I would you a, do that? My family members, they went hiring an attorney for 10,000 and when he came to me, I was in the county jail for over a year going back and forth, back and forth, and he's trying to get me to plea. He came to me uh, about 500 something days later while I was in the county with a 15 year <laughs> plea bargain saying, you take this, you have no criminal background, all you have is just misdemeanors, and you take this, you sign it, I got a chance of getting you probation or even off because there's no evidence. The judge is asking you, did you do this? You're taking a plea and you're like, yep, yep, yep. Right. So you said, I did I it. I did. Yeah. And he gave you 20 years. Right. When he gives you 20 years, what was your feeling? Uh, I was pissed off. I heard, you know, my family in the background. I had a lot of family there. Some of them was, they were trying to get them to attempt a court because they got up and ran out of the courtroom. Then my mother crying in the background. Yeah, because they're thinking, maybe I'm going to walk out of here and next thing you know, you're doing 20 years. Right. What was prison like? The hardest part was seeing my family. Sometimes behind glass, having to talk to him on the phone. I lost my brother while I was in there. <laughs> Seeing my family behind that glass. You're here today to really just clear your name with your wife, though, right? With everybody. Well, I mean, it's going to be kind of hard <laughs> right. to clear a 18-year conviction for sexual assault off your record, right? Right. I mean, you don't think that's ever going to happen, do you? Yes. You do. Okay. All right, let's meet your wife, Cindy. Why would you marry somebody who's a sex offender, who's an ex-con, if you didn't open yourself up to the possibility that he did it? Because why would you even came here to take a lie detector test if you're rolling the dice that your wife might divorce you? Because you've been penalized. You've been judged. You've served your punishment. Why would you come here and take a lie detector test if she's saying, if you fail, I'm gonna divorce you. If it happens like that, it's something we'll have to cross, you know, talk through it or- If you fail. Work through it, yes sir. Work through it, I don't know. See, I mean, but the point is, you might fail. Possibility. Depends. When you hear I him mean, say that, what's going through your mind? Confusion. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm a probable, you know, statistic guy, right? Like right. the lost probability. Right, right. Yeah. I think he did it. I think he went. <laughs> You're not going to clear your name. You're not going to be uh, a convict that gets his record cleansed away. It's not going to happen. You live in a fantasy world if you think that's happening. But. You want me to read this? Yes? That's what you want. All right, William, you came here and we asked you, 
Did that 11-year-old girl ever perform oral sex on you? You answered no. Did you ever engage in any sexual physical contact with that 11-year-old girl? You answered no. And the results came back the same to each question. And it came back that William did not tell the truth. Where are you going, man? Your wife is still out here. Um, you know, like I just pointed out, we've had guys come on, clear their name of doing a crime. This, you know, you hear the story, and it's just like, eh, you know, why don't you just go about your life? You did the punishment. Hey, I did this. Move forward. Absolutely. I, so what do you want to add? Um, this gentleman here had taken four polygraph tests with uh, the parole department uh, for monitoring and maintenance to make sure that he wasn't reoffending. So they would ask him, did you go next to a schoolyard? Did you touch any children? Things along those lines. And he passed all of those, so he didn't reoffend. What he didn't take with them was an instant offense test, which when somebody comes out of prison and denies the crime, the first thing they do is the instant offense test of did you do it? So it leads me to believe that he didn't deny this to probation. Um, I gave him the instant offense test of did you do it? And here is uh, just one example of his dramatic reaction when he answers no to the sex offender question. Um, he needs a plus four to pass Steve and a minus four to fail. He's a minus 17. Looks like that. You did something horrible. And you did, and you paid the price for it. You gave your whole young adult manhood away. Now, I guess the easiest thing to do is when he meets you is, I didn't do it. Don't look at me like an animal that I did this to somebody. I can't imagine it's ever easier, even after doing 20 years. You don't want to admit you committed such a horrible crime. Do you decide to continue on knowing that he lied to you about this? You could talk to him. I honestly don't know. I guess my question I have to ask you is, when do you stop living a lie? Or do you just, you're going to go to your grave with a, I didn't do it? No. Do you have something you want to tell her? Sorry I hurt you. Put you through all of this. And your choice you make is, I got to live with it, I guess. So you're, I just want to be clear. You're not disputing the facts of this lie detector test, right? Can't. You're not disputing it, no. though, right? No. So you did do it. OK. So now all the lies are on the table, right? Again, and I'm, I'm going to go to bat for you a little bit here. What you did was horrible, OK? And I'll say, I'm gonna, I gotta be honest, if it was me, I would never, but, but it's not in my DNA to give a second chance to somebody like this. It's not me. But, like I said, he did his time, he made this mistake. Will he ever do it again? I don't think so. You can understand why he lied, do you, right? Not when you're starting a relationship. It's true, it's hard to, it's, to, it's hard to start a trust. relationship based on a lie. You have to have trust. No. It doesn't mean anything that now he's actually confessed that he did do it. A lot of mixed emotions right now. Yeah. I can't expect you to make a decision a now. I would hope that you'll let us know what decision you come to and move forward, whether you're, it's with him or without him. Um, I know this has got to be incredibly tough on you. Truthfully, you made another woman a victim here. Okay. Um, Do you like what you see? All new episodes are coming, and you do not want to miss out. Click subscribe now.